what I can say is that I was part of a fellowship um, that was heavily, heavily practicing uh, the, 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 the matter of delivering people from demonic um, possession. So I would see people convulsing and I would hear people speaking in strange voices. So this is not your Tyler Perry type of, uh, Prince Tyler type of situation because Prince Tyler is busy quoting a Hollywood movie here for us. And if that was not enough, Nihi comes in with Lesilo. <laughs> Lesilo. And I cannot believe that, you know, he's relating uh, Jesus Christ to Lesilo. I don't know how he makes that connection. However, it's Nihi, so I'm not surprised, you know. He makes the strangest of connections. And so I would hear women speak in deep voices, and I could tell that this is not human. Right, you, it's like going from zero to 100, you know, just like that at the snap of a finger. And uh, what was very interesting to me is that at times the, 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 the bishop of the church, he would ask this person who is manifesting, he would speak to the spirit, asking the spirit, what are you doing in this person's life? What are you here for? What is your name? And the spirit would begin to dish out what uh, uh, it's doing in this person's life. And it would say that, well, I make her to gossip against her neighbor. And it's kind of like what uh, Brother Edwin was talking about, confessions, basically. I mean, people would confess like hectic stuff, like, you know, like, uh, uh, um, you know, someone who's who's been unfaithful in their marriage. You know, the spirit would say, well, I'm making her sleep around outside her marriage and she's cheating with this guy and that guy and so on and so forth. And these are confessions that this person in their sober mind, they wouldn't do that. You know, they'd come to church, nice, well-dressed and so on and so forth. And you see, this is a decent person. But now when the deliverance process begins, then you see another side. Then you get to realize that you can't judge a book by its cover. And I mean, I would see these things, as I said earlier on, tender age of 11 years old. Long story short, I leave that fellowship. I backslide. I become a full-on sinner, right? You, some of you know my testimony. I'm arrested at age 15 for MI2P and intimidation. Uh, I'm getting involved in gangsterism, robbing people, doing drugs, you name it, I did it. At that part of my life as a teenager, I go to the homelands in Eastern Cape. And, you know, it's, it's initiation, the boys have gone to the mountain. I've never seen this before. So they hold the ceremony when the boys come back from the mountain in a tent. But then what they will do is they will hire a witch doctor. And this is to clear the way for the boys or the men who are now men. And so remember now, I'm not a Christian at this point. And it's fair to say that at that particular point, I, I wasn't really hung up or believed in this whole concept of witchcraft. And so I'm riding a bike. So we're going to this ceremony and I'm on a, a mountain bike. And then behind me, I start hearing noises like horses are running. And so I stop the bike, right? And so I look behind me, I see people running. So I didn't see what they were running away from. It's a clear blue sky, sunny day. So, you know, a black person, you, you don't have to investigate like, hey, what is, you, you see people running, you start running as well. So I take off with the bike, but then it got to a point where I realized I need to get off this bike because I'm not moving fast enough. And I kid you not, clear blue sky, the sun is out. Huge, uh, 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 um, 
uh, uh, ice blocks. I, I don't know what you, you you call it, like hail or something like that. As big as a tennis ball. And I want to re-emphasize clear blue sky. And it was hailing. I couldn't believe my eyes. So I get off the bike. I take shelter by this other tavern, right? It was the nearest shelter I could get to. And one of these things nearly hit me, massive. So as I'm in there, people are talking like, yo, yo, yo. Yeah, they, they hired this guy and he's powerful and so on and so forth. So I, I start snooping around like, what are you guys talking about? So, so they talk about this witch doctor, which was hired to do something with the weather. I'm saying this as a Christian. I saw it as an unbeliever. And I'm saying it as a Christian. At that point, that's when I witnessed witchcraft for the first time, where there was a clear blue sky and I saw hail, like huge ice blocks as big as a tennis ball running for, uh, rain from the sky. Okay, so to cut a long story short, let, let, let me land. To cut a long story short, I believe in, 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 in witchcraft that it exists. I become a Christian. Okay, There's a whole lot of information that I'm, I'm skipping here. I wish I had more time to tell you. Now I'm a Christian. My wife and I, we get married. And I, I, I had my own place. My wife moves in with me after we get married, not before. After we get married, she moves in with me. A few weeks down the line, she receives a gift from her employer, an Indian Hindu employer. This was like a, like a teddy bear type of thing. And then my wife starts having dreams as soon as, you know, she got that gift. Funny dreams. Well, it wasn't dreams. She would say she would feel like there was a man that would come inside our room. And when this man would come inside our room, she's a Christian. We're both Christians. She says that she wouldn't be able to move. And he's moving towards her. She's trying to move and she can't. And this happened for a number of days. And then we prayed about this. And then something said to me, wait a minute, when did this thing start? She tells me, no, it started on this day. And then I remember that's the same day that she brought that gift into the house. So I say to her, okay, let's try something. This gift, take it to your mom's house. Her mom didn't stay so far from our place. So my wife is like, why? I'm like, just trust me. Let's just see what happens. So she drops it off at her mom's house. She comes back home. I promise you, she slept peacefully that night. No issues. The following night, the third night. Then I said to her, okay, go and fetch it again. Then she went, she brought it back. And then that same spirit came back to the room. That same day that she brought back that gift from uh, that lady. Uh, so I'll just land it here for now. If anybody has got questions, I'll take questions. Bishop Lunga, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, interesting um, story you shared with us there. Interesting experience indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, we have experienced strange things, you know, um, people uh, convulsing, women speaking in deep voices, um, spirits confessing through deliverance um, activities. Um, these are the things you have experienced, and then you are backsliding, and then, of course, that um, experience with witchcraft uh, um, during the boy initiation ceremony and uh, the witch that was that was um, kind of you know um, hired uh, to to carry out that um, um, witchcraft services, whatever you may call it. There now, it's, that's quite interesting. Uh, what you, what you are sharing? I mean, uh, Prince Tyler, probably Prince Tyler here, Mister Lunga will 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 kind of like you know oppose you and say, well, that hail that you're talking about in uh, in, in 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 broad daylight. Um, it's not it's, it's not something that is strange, you know, combination of heat and humidity in the sum, these things, they happen. It's not something that is, you know, kind of, you know, um, like a strange phen phenomenon there. Um, but then, uh, Mr. Lunga, because for me, I, I feel you. I, I really, I really feel you. And then the story that you're telling with a gift, you know, that, you know, was somehow was a point of contact 
uh, for uh, demonic forces. Uh, that's that's my interest, and of course the 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 aspect of of of, of the hail. We'll come back to that one. That that aspect of you know um, that gift being a point of contact. I mean, it's 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 an object. It's just an object. It's a gift, but then somehow it's a point of contact. It's like demonically manipulated. Um, how is 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 this taking place? I mean, um, is is it because I mean, as 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 again, I, I will quote um, Prince Tyler here. Um, that is more of kind of you know, um, in a way, according to um, to Prince Tyler, placebo effect. That because already you have thought that this might be uh, the point of contact, this could be the object that is causing. Um, you know, um, the, the the spiritual un restlessness. So if it's that's that's the thing, let's remove it, and then in your mind, and then it's it's you are fine, and then you bring it back. Already, you have conditioned and positioned your mind that this must happen. Like, what what would be the the difference between that? You know, which Prince Salah might say is a placebo effect. It's just in your mind, and actually the demonic manifestation for it. How can we decipher? the difference there, Bishop Luka. I don't know if my question is clear then. No, no, it's 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 very much clear. So, you know, when this happened, I asked my wife a series of questions because this is what we are taught in our fellowship that whenever you are experiencing what you would suspect would be foul play, you know, any kind of witchcraft you have to ask a series of questions. You have to investigate to try and find out what could be the root cause of this thing. So obviously speaking to my wife, you know, we, we, we spoke asking her questions. Hey, has this happened before? And she told me that, yes, it used to happen a lot when she would read certain kind of novels. You know, these are like X-rated novels type of thing. But then obviously when she became a Christian, she got convicted that she needs to stop reading these novels. And she did. And then she told me that that's when, you know, the spirit stopped coming into my room when I would be sleeping. And so now I understood that, okay, so there must be some kind of item that this spirit uses as an entry point. So at first it had to do you know, with these books that, you know, are rich with sexual immorality. That was the gateway for the spirit, but then she repented of that. But now we were dealing with something else. And then, you know, again, as I said, we prayed, and that's when it dawned on me to, to you know, maybe start questioning about this gift that she got from her employer who was Hindu. And so through the questioning, I then got to understand that this is not her, like her mind uh, playing games with her or her hallucinating, but this could be investigated and you could streamline a trend. You could pick up, there's a trend here, right? And it had to do with some type of object, right? And so we then did a test. But when we did the test, I didn't specify to her to say, okay, this is why we're doing it. I just said, ah, just trust me, just take it to your mom's house. Let's see. And then obviously I do understand that she herself should put two and two. two. She was actually against the idea because she loved that gift, you know, cute and cuddly, innocently looking, you know, teddy bear, whatever the case might be. But then when it was not in my house, then that spirit never came in our room. But when we brought it back, then that spirit came in our room, right? And this obviously was not the first experience she's had. This, as I said, again, she's had the same experience with the book. But when she had the experience with the book, she didn't know because she was not a Christian. Because she said that I used to read these books as an unbeliever. I got convicted when I became a Christian and then I stopped. But then when I stopped, that's when... I stopped feel or getting this experience of the spirit coming into the room. 
Thank you very much, Bishop Lunga. Thank you very much. Just a brief one before I see Master Royalty wants to um, interact with you. Um, in a case of, for example, we see uh, the case of uh, the Ark of the Covenant and, and Dagon. Uh, and we see that when, when, when the Ark of the Covenant is brought in, in Dagon's temple, Dagon um, falls down, you know, the next day is discovered that he has fallen. Uh, and then he's um, lifted up again, positioned thoroughly. And then the following day, uh, not only has he fallen down, but uh, his head are chopped off, hands chopped off. I mean, someone can say that uh, in a case of witchcraft or object that are, are a point of contact versus, you know, um, as a believer, then it means that you saturate the atmosphere with the presence of God, right? Uh, why can't the same scenario, the same thing, you know, uh, that happened, for example, in the case of the Ark of the Covenant in Dagon, uh, happen in any other object or other things that, you know, uh, we come across or they come uh, uh, on our way. Why can't they, you know, they fall down or neutralized? Um, why should they be taken out in order for, for the freedom to, okay, I don't know if, if you, you can um, catch my question there, Bishop Luka. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. Thank you, so sir. the difference, yeah, the difference here is that you play a role, right, in, in, in bringing in this object, right, where as, you know, uh, with, uh, with, I believe it was the Philistines, if I'm not mistaken, with Dagon, there was foul play there. And with that case, it wasn't an issue or an element of witchcraft that was divine retribution it was god's way of correcting the ethical standard for them they thought that it was correct it was right to go and take the ark of the covenant but they were wrong however you need to understand they thought they were right and so the question then is if you think that you are right and I think I am right, but we disagree, then how do we know who is wrong and who is right? And so divine retribution is what sets the record straight, where there is divine judgment, not human judgment, but there is divine judgment. That then begins to point out as to who is applying the accurate or the right ethical standard. Someone spoke about that earlier on, but for the sake of time, I don't want to get into it. So when it comes now to us and these objects, and you're saying that, but these objects should fall down to us. Yes, they should if we don't play a role in it. Remember, this is what God said, that there is no witchcraft against the house of Israel. Why? They didn't play a role. There was no sin. There was, uh, there was no entry point. But if there is something that we do, which opens the door then to that demonic spirit, then obviously we can expect that that demonic, demonic spirit, uh, spirit would then fall to what you picture as the covenant, because we open the door to it. It falls to us. It falls flat on its face. It doesn't enter when we keep our hearts right. So it applies in that sense. Bishop Lunga, thank you very much for that. Uh, beautiful indeed. Thank you very much for that. I could say. Uh, Master Royalty, your hand is up. Yes. Uh, thank you, Brother Bongs. Uh, Lunga, so I just want to ask a few questions um, surrounding that whole scenario of the, the, the gift, the doll. Was it a doll? Yeah, it was some cute uh, teddy bear thing, man. My wife even gave it a name. <laughs> ah, okay. So when it was taken to your mother-in-law's house, did did she have a spirit visiting her? Well, we didn't actually ask about that. We didn't ask her. And I actually don't think my wife spoke to her about it. Um, but the, because your wife is probably close to her mother, um, was there any conversation with regards to, oh, 
something like that? Nothing. Not not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. Um, so I, I wanted to ask, do you think, let's say, hypothetically speaking, that um, nothing happened because nothing was spoken about, um, according to your knowledge, uh, let's say uh, nothing happened when this particular object went to the mother-in-law's, your mother-in-law's house, right? Um, do you think, oh, is your mother-in-law born again? Um, do you go to the same church? Yes, yes, she is. Hmm. Okay. So my, my question would be to you that do you think the more conscious you are um, of, of, of these things, these demons and evil spirits, the more susceptible you are to them? Um, because... I'm hearing uh, Tyler, I'm hearing Nihilist, I'm hearing everybody who's opposing um, their existence. Um, they don't think of them as, as things that exist. Therefore, they do not have any problem with such encounters. So I just want to ask, do you think that it's a, it's a consciousness thing in terms of um, what you believe in and what you think exists? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Look, the devil doesn't care whether you believe in him or not. If he has an open door, he will take that opportunity. Whether you believe he exists or not, irrespective. right? So there's a whole lot of people who don't believe in this kind of stuff and they are subjected to witchcraft even though they don't believe in it. So I gave the example with my wife before she was a Christian right, before she believed in any of these things, before she was even convicted about reading books that had sexual immorality in them, right, she had this encounter. So she had the encounter before she believed in the spiritual and she had the encounter after. So whether you believe in it or not, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, um, I, I think based on um, the submissions of people who don't believe in it, if we're talking about opening doors, then they may have opened doors because they don't believe in God, they are not secured, they are not safe uh, under the blood of Jesus, you know. Um, therefore, they should have some experience of, of, of these uh, supernatural happenings. That's why I'm asking the question I'm asking. Um, because I, Tyler, Tyler, have you experienced this? You don't believe in it, right? Have you experienced it? Earlier in the submission I did, I said I had an experience where I saw Linda Blair because I internalized the image of Linda Blair. And that's why I saw Linda Blair. And so when people talk about their experiences, I think it comes directly from their environment. It comes directly from their brains. So you think you saw it because you internalized it? Yes. Okay, but now did my wife internalize the spirit that walks in the room and arrest her that she can't even move? You guys were even told um, how to how to even uh, uh, identify and the questions that you're supposed to ask um, when you think you're being attacked. So this thing was drilled into your mind. I'm not saying that I don't yeah, believe it. It was, it was drilled into my mind. But what I'm asking about is when my wife was not a Christian and she was reading the novels, did she then internalize the spirit that would walk into the room and, and arrest her to a point where she can't even move when she's sleeping? You know, that's my question. Did she internalize that? No, I'm not saying that. My question to you was, do you not think that because of the content that we are fed, the environment that we are in, you know? So you are also in turn asking me the same question that I'm asking you. You understand? But yeah, Brother Bonds, I think I, I, I don't quite get the, the whole thing. I'm not opposing that they exist. But my thing is, why 
um, is it then that people who don't believe in it or who don't pay much mind to to these things hardly ever experience such ex- such such things, you know? Maso, Maso, let me ask you something. Do you know about E. Corobella? Have you heard about it? Do you know about it? Yeah, I do. I've heard about it, yes. Okay. So in in relation to what you just asked me now, what is your perspective then regarding E. Corobella? Uh, I don't think it could work on me. Uh, yeah. So that's that's your perspective, that you don't think it can work on you. The, that's your summary of Ikorobela. Yeah. Okay, so are you aware that it has worked on other people? Oh, no. Nobody has ever said to me Corobella has worked on them. You know why they, they, they wouldn't say that? Because when Corobella works on you, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't okay. know that, hey, I, I've just drank something or I've eaten something and it's making me like a person I don't like. That's the whole point. Corobella and not just natural love taking place. If we can't even identify if it's Corobel. But that's the whole that's the whole that's the whole uh, uh, deception behind it. And I've witnessed this myself. I had a, a friend, his name was Graven. This guy was as ugly as a mud fence. Okay, we we lived together in, in Hillbro. And then one day I, we're walking down hill, bro, and then I just see girls, they start greeting, hey, gravy, nah. and these are pretty girls, right? I don't pay much mm-hmm. attention to it, but we continue walking, and the same thing happens. And then I realized that, no, man, something is off. Something is unusual here. So I kept on asking, you know, my friend, like, bro, like, where were you last night? Why are all these women greeting you and stuff like that? And he laughs. This happened for a number of days until I became very, very concerned. And I kept on pressing him. He didn't want to tell me, like, what's up? So up until I- eventually, yeah. eventually I pressed him enough that he told me that, no, there's this thing that I buy a Faraday. The Faraday taxi rank. This thing, you chew it and then you spit it before you leave your house. And every girl that sees you will basically like you. I saw that with my own eyes. I didn't know what it was, but I could see something unusual is happening around my friend. Something that has never happened before is happening now, and it's happening at a huge rate, a huge level, to such an uh, an extent that our, it concerned me. I pressed him and pressed him and I'm like, bro, like, what is going on? Why are all these chicks greeting you? Like, it's like, you you know, that type of thing. And for me, that's when I first found out about it. And it was not the only time I had this exposure to it. Okay, Um, I understand you. So, number one, according to you, Ish, we're, we're going far. But anyway, let's just tackle this one and then I'm done. Number one, you didn't think that your friend is worthy of love. Number one. Not, not love. Not love. Attention, but specifically from those girls. Like, this was a different kind of girls. These girls were, they were way above his league. They were too pretty for him. As I said, he's my friend. This guy was ugly. He was ugly as a mud fence. Like, they gave me no attention. But they gave him all the attention. So I knew something was up here. Something is not right. Guys, Okay. No, truthfully, truthfully, I'll admit to that. There was a bit of that, but there was a huge concern as well as to like, what the heck is going on here, guys? Why are all the pretty girls all of a sudden greeting this guy? This now goes back to my question, Hori. Um, 
does these things not happen to people who believe in it, who who think it's 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 possible? Because now your friend went somewhere and he was told to eat something and had an expected um a, a, a result from that particular thing. Whereas what if like Mwano Munyani picks that thing up not aware nothing happens because he's not aware of what that thing is supposedly able to do so what i'm saying is um our beliefs the the content that we take in everything that we um that we are taught do these things not play a part in our experiences that was my question to you uh yeah too long and Lunga, you take so long to answer. Yo. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Thank you very much. Uh, uh Bishop Lunga, thank you very much. Master Royal, thank you very much for the interaction. Um, yeah, wonderful people. Thank you very much for that. All right, let's keep going, ladies and gents, moving towards a closing window. Yeah, on Bible Hat Talks. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, uh, Mr. Lung, I wonder if if Korobela can reach the states. Uh, I need I need to use uh, Korobela here. Yeah, you touched. They 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 call it potions in the state. They oh, call they it have potions. It. Same thing. They call it potions. It's a different uh-huh. name. A love potion, right? Specifically, a love potion. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Bishop, for that info. I have to use it. I wonder if Prince Tyler has access to potion. Yeah. All right. Listen, Jess, let's move on here on Bible Hot Talks. Let's um let's throw let's go back to a bigoted anchor. Umalume there. We tried to reach out before, but um I think there was some corovela going on there. He he didn't see the unmute button. Uh, but now I think he overcame uh, the Koroben. Uh, Bicotted Uncle, good to have you on Bible Hat Talks. Uh, it's been a billion <laughs> years. Uh, please talk to us. Beware of the Koroben. It's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was about to come on and complain. Guti. This is why I left uh, Twitter for, for TikTok. But if you already called me in and I missed it, then it's 100% my problem. So, <laughs> But... Uh, you know, I, I've been listening um, quite diligently, and I think, Guti, you have your resident skeptic here, O Prince, and uh, I will not step on his toes too much. But what I wanted to share was that, regardless, I mean, going back to the topic, regardless of how you define it, witchcraft, demons, whatever the case may be, right? Um, it, it does not exist because no matter what you do to define it, the moment people start asking questions about it, then you redefine it. In other words, the goal the goalposts keep moving, right? So if I say to you, demons don't exist, you say they do. I say, how? You say X, Y, Z. And I start breaking down X, Y, and Z. Then your next statement will be, I right, don't play with the ancestors. The ancestors are not here to please you. There's always some excuse that follows subsequent to, to to the original definition of what uh, ancestors are, or oh, sorry, demons and whatever are, you know. And I'm not just speaking hypothetically, right? Uh, and I understand that some people, you know, they, it's said, like Mobushiri and stuff like that, they take advantage of our natural inclination due to evolution, right? Our natural inclination to want to belong, to want to have a leader or somebody in the pack that leads the pack and so on. They take advantage of that that natural evolutionary nature of ours and they abuse it to get money out of us or to get fame or whatever the case may be you know what i mean and i I don't want to be those people who just comes here and say ah they are lying right and to that end we started with a pot right we started with a pot of twenty five thousand rand right uh, saying that if anyone can prove anything supernatural, go ahead, right? Then the the first answer is always, yeah, of course, witchcraft exists, you know, we'll, we'll show you. Then I say, okay, define to me exactly what you're going to show me. Then that's when the goal, goalposts move. And when they do find somebody who's brave enough to come on, once you start challenging them, then they start saying, I, when, 
you know, we don't use these powers for you. Aye, if people really did this, they wouldn't come out. Aye, demons, you don't see them. because You know, there's always some excuse that people come up with. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is and saying this thing, from the evidence we have, does not exist. And I've, I left the, the Twitter space and I went to preach on the <laughs> TikTok space to say, whoever can prove this thing, please come out. Hey, TikTok people sending me numbers. Oh, 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 law, oh, 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 law, whatever. Show me the powers. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's been two years to a point where even other people have contributed to this pot. This pot is now sitting at 75,000 rand. We're coming from 25,000 rand to 75,000 rand in two years, and not a single person is able to come up and say, let me demonstrate to you, Ikorobela. Let me demonstrate to you, good lawyer. Let me send lightning to your address. The... No one can do it. And, and you know, for those people that, that say, Hi, these are dark, evil things. If you want to demonstrate them, then you'll be exposing people for the darkness and the evilness and whatever the case may be. Then my argument there is, Let's not do it dark then. If you have powers to tell somebody from uh, look, she in it, be so wet, whatever it may be. Sorry if I'm stereotyping people that they'll be bulletproof if they go and rob a bank or they go and do a CIT uh, a heist or they go and do this that they'll be bulletproof. Bullets will miss them. Bullets will dodge them. Bullets will whatever. I say to them, okay, fine. Let's get a chicken. Put the chicken here in front of us. Make the chicken bulletproof. If I shoot a bullet at the chicken and it bounces off, then you get your 75,000 rand. If I shoot it and it dies, then we have a braai or a barbecue for, for the sake of people like my prince, right? So th there's no need to be evil about this. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of demonstrating those powers. Like I said, do, lo, lo, na, thing, right? So I'm going to leave the 75,000 rand here on the table and I'm going to go back to TikTok where you don't have to wait two hours to speak unless you, you're falling asleep yourself and you miss your opportunity to speak like I just did, you know. And, uh, yeah, and I encourage anyone who's got good law, yeah, Korobela, sending lightning, Ukoko, they can do this, a toy, they can do that, any of those things to demonstrate it. And I guarantee but, you, I'm saying it but, now, I guarantee but Maluma, you, I've lawyered you, no Maluma. one. I've lawyered you, you can't say no one, Maluma. I've lawyered you here. <laughs> Lawyer, do you hear Malume? Prima is 75,000 here. <laughs> <laughs> you lawyered me to do what? I forgot. Remind me what the, what the spell was. You were supposed to speak, Malume. You didn't. I speak on? Yeah. Oh, e evolution. Oh, my no. gosh. Yes. Yeah, I've lawyered no? you, Malume. Oh, okay. Oh, to come and speak tonight. Malume, you see, you are even confused now. You see, you yeah, have, I'm you confused. You haven't recovered yet. <laughs> That's how strong your lawyering <laughs> is, ne? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, fish can fall from the sky, hell can fall on a clear day. These are things that are easily explainable if you care to bother, you know, to understand them. But if you don't and you wanna but, say it's, but it's here's the thing. Then can can you plan it though to happen at a certain time? Can you plan it? Plan what? I know I know that they do happen. But can you plan it to say that when these boys come down from the mountain, then let it happen at this particular time and let it happen in this location? No, I, I can cannot do, do that. And I don't know anyone so that, who can. So that's what I'm saying. That is and what I saw. I'm not saying that fine. it cannot I, happen. I agree. What that's I'm saying fine. is that that is how it happened. That is fine, brother. But if you're saying somebody planned it, then 75,000 Rand will reward them for repeating that experiment. Dololo. No one will repeat that. Are you, are anyway. you, are you, are you, are you asking me? Uh, uh, something yes, yes, yes. So you are saying no, that. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Yeah, no, I can't no, be taking you. you to witch doctors for you to get that experience. Why no, would I do fine. that? It's fine. But the ice blocks falling from the sky and on a clear day or people coming from the mountain, whatever, you're implying, unless I misunderstood you, you're implying that it was orchestrated by somebody. I'm not implying it. I'm saying that is what I experienced. That is exactly no, that's what you experienced. What yeah, it's fine. I'm yeah. saying you can experience that anyway. Then you said, but can you plan it? That's why I'm saying orchestrated. 
Yeah, because the way you're trying to like do away with my experiences, you're saying that, yes, but now these things do happen. Hail yeah. does fall in a clear blue yes. sky. And I'm yes, saying, I yes, say I agree with you. However, can you then plan it? Can you say, uh -huh. let hail fall from the sky at this uh -huh. particular time? in this particular uh, location. When these boys are coming down from the mountain, then let it happen because that's what the guy was paid for. Uh -huh. So he, you and I are walking paid. hand in hand. Yes, no, I he was paid you. to do it at that time, on that day, in yes. that location. Yes. I'm with you, brother. So you and I are walking hand in hand. We're saying that it can fall during the day. You experienced it. I am not surprised that you experienced it. So, so far we're on the same path. Where we split, where the fork comes in, is when you say it was planned and orchestrated by a specific individual, right? Then when I say to you, there is no such individual, and to prove that there is no such individual, I'm giving you 75,000 rand, your answer is, I am a Christian, I shall not be involved in that. That is 100% what I was talking about earlier on, that the excuses start tumbling no, out of people's but, mouths when it's time yeah. to put the money where your mouth but don't you, is. So don't fine. You no, think, no, no, hold on one second. It's fine for you to say, it's fine for you to story. say you don't know anybody because you're a Christian. That's fine. I don't expect you to. You're a Christian. You don't delve in those things. You Then it implies that you heard that it was planned. If you heard that it was planned, feel free to point me in the direction of that person who seems to have the power to make hell fall out of the sky, and I'll leave you alone. You carry on being a Christian, I'll then follow that one individual no, who claims brother, to have those powers. That's a ridiculous uh, uh, request. Of course. Honestly of course. speaking, it's of a course ridiculous. It is. Yeah, because it doesn't happen so, exactly. So it's like, it's like you saying to me, all right, Lunga, you are saying as a Christian that witchcraft is real. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, I want you to point me in the direction where I can experience this witchcraft. And I'm yes. saying to you, why would I do that as a Christian? So, earlier on, I specifically said, when I came on, on, on the space, I'm not sure if you were here, I said... I know and I understand witchcraft. Besides the fact that I'm a Christian, I know and I understand witchcraft. And because mm. I know and understand it, mm. I would never take part in it. Okay. I said so, that earlier, before you mentioned your 75,000, before I could come back and rebuttal and say, bro, I can't take okay. part of it, I had already said Okay, my fault too. then. My problem then. It's my fault then. I'll, I'll recant that. And I'll just leave you with this one. I know and I'm capable of going invisible, but I don't want to show anybody and I don't want anyone to see me. If no one's looking, I can go invisible. It's, but it's not, other than it's that, not my burden I don't want to be prove, involved in... To prove, to, to show you witchcraft. It's not it's my burden. It's 100% your I'm, burden because you imply that it exists. I'm not a witch doctor. I'm yeah, not but, a witch you, but you still agree that it exists. And the fact that you say yes, you know of yes, witchcraft yes, and you know yes. it exists, it implies but that you, you have knowledge. Do, do you You're not an agnostic, you are on. a Gnostic on witchcraft. So you do you know. understand what I based that on? I based that on an experience that I had as a teenager. Yeah, but I an experience that I'm could have sorry. come from normal... So far, it's an experience that come, could have come from abnormal yes, weather yes. conditions. That okay yes, but planet. now let, let's not go around in circles because I said to you, logically speaking, I'm now mm. appealing to your logic. Yes, sure. it can happen. Yes. Normally it does happen. But can you do it to a point where no, you're saying, I, I want it, it to happen at this time and I want it to happen in this location when these boys are coming down from the mountain specifically? I repeat, I repeat you can't. You can't. Yes, yes. You so can't. that that is what that is what sets it apart from your normal experience. Okay, but now if it sets you... it apart, it means that it can happen. I'm I'm not saying it can happen. I'm uh -huh. saying it uh -huh. did happen. Uh -huh. I'm saying it did happen. Uh -huh. I'm not saying it can. I'm saying it did happen. I saw yeah, it. I'm I also saying it can happen. Your your story is not strange up until the point where you say somebody orchestrated it. That is where we lose each other. But up until it happened, we are on the same page. I agree. It's possible. It's happened. Right? But look, once look, you imply look, that somebody right, orchestrated it, right, we lose each right, other. All right. All right. Beautiful one, gentlemen. Lunga said something about um, hailstorms. Um, and I think we know that 
weather events, they like, you know, at least scientifically speaking, they occur spontaneously. So I, I don't know why we are taking what he said um, as like a sign of God, like a sign from God when, you know, there are earthquakes that happen at, you know, there are li lightning strikes. I remember a story about a man who was proposing to his girlfriend the minute she accepted his, uh, his proposal, lightning struck him dead. So am I to believe that, you know, God wanted that man to die because he proposed to the wrong girl? Like, you know, so these are, these are things that just like, what I don't think that a weather event um, is really proof of anything. Although I, I understand that it can feel that way if it happens in a particular moment. Um, another thing he said uh, is about his friend who is what he calls very ugly. Um, justice for his friend, by the way, because, okay. Um, uh, there is a pandemic. There's an epidemic of uh, beautiful women all over the world who have really low standards, who go for conventionally unattractive men. I, they are literally everywhere. They're literally everywhere. In fact, men complain about this all the time, about how they look good and they have all of these assets and that me that women will ignore them and go for conventionally unattractive guys. And they will complain that, you know, men who have other things to offer other than their looks are getting the girls. They're all over Twitter. Those videos are going viral right now as we speak. So am I to believe that all of these conventionally unattractive men are buying charms and witchcraft to, you know, get these pretty girls. No, pretty girls have very, very low standards. Like they have very, very low standards in a lot of cases. They're not always really? the gold digger type. They're not always like trying to, you know, date men for money. Some of them have, you know, other things in their life that get them to go for men that are completely out of their league you know, in the opposite direction. So I, I don't, uh, again, I don't think that that's proof of anything. But lastly, like, you know, for the whole demons and evil spirits thing, you know, I said this before, that I do think that, you know, e <laughs> ascribing morality to a spirit is, um, is very weird. I think that it's just people who are ashamed of their actions trying to attribute it to something else. But you can, but to Tyler's point, and I think that this is the most poignant thing that he said, is that these things are inspired by our environment. Because I often wonder why, like, when people describe these evil spirits and demons, they are described with, you know, like, like common themes of darkness. Oh, okay. Is my time up? Um, let, let me just, let me just take 15 seconds to finish this last point. Tay Tay, Tay Tay, Tay Tay, you know, in this space, right, when you're saying, when you're saying something that doesn't like, uh, really, um, conform to Christian standards, you get a buzz. But if you speak in Christian... <laughs> Is it because I'm non-Christian that I get interrupted like this? They're lying. They're lying. You. <laughs> see you. We see you. No, no I, I just Tay, so, super, you got super more than like... one minute actually, okay? You got yeah. more than one minute. So just wrap up quickly. Yeah, just super just super quickly. Like I would I, I would just I wanna question why demons and evil spirits always appear, you know, in these kind of, like the like they always have a theme of darkness or like they're very scary looking. It's almost as if, like, the presentation is, um, you know, something that is made up in, in the human imagination, because there's absolutely no reason in this world why, you know, a being in white can't be evil, or why a being that is shrouded in darkness can't be good, you know? So I, I, that I feel like, you know, Prince Tyler's point about how these things are you know, made up in our imaginations based off of what we see in our environment um, is is a really poignant one because, you know, when we talk about things that scare people, um, you know, darkness scares people because you, you literally can't see. Um, and then 
whenever we want to describe something as good, um, historically speaking and in writing and in literature, they always try to make this person seem like they are being, you know, uh, surrounded by light. And I think that for that simple reason, I think that a lot of it has to do with like different interpretations of, of human consciousness and not because there are actual evil spirits out there. But that's it. I'm done. It's everyone's friend. It's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend. It's Tyler. It's everyone's friend. It's Tyler. It's everyone's friend. It's Tyler.